Hello, everyone, and welcome to Slash.media's SourceForge podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Bo Hamilton, senior editor and multimedia producer here at Slash.media and SourceForge, the world's most visited software comparison site where B2B software buyers compare and find business software solutions. Today, we're talking with Dan Miller, the CEO of Timeogix, a simple to use cloud based timesheet solution for businesses of all shapes and sizes. Dan, welcome to the podcast. Glad you could join us. Yeah. Thanks, Bo. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, I want to just begin and jump right into it. Could you give us an overview of Timeogix and sort of talk about some of the, the key solutions your company offers for managing and tracking employee hours, project time, and just overall productivity? Yeah, sure. Yeah, as you stated, my name is Dan, and I'm the owner and founder of Timeogix. And Timeogix is an online time and expense tracking application. And at a high level, Tomogix allows your employees, and it could be not only your employees, it could be any person working for you. It could be a consultant, contractor, basically anyone to track their time during the day on different clients, projects, and tasks. And, you know, this way at the end of the day, I mean, the week, the month, even the year, you as that business owner can see exactly where your employees are spending their time. And this works, you know, it works really well, especially if you're billing for your employees' time and you need that centralized place to store and then report on that data so that you could then invoice the client um, for those hours worked, right? So, but then on, you know, overall productivity, and it, it kind of depends really on the organization, but using a time tracking application, um, can improve your productivity just because it really, it requires your employee to be more accountable. And so there's a lot more that can be, you know, said and how you get that accountability, but, and we can definitely dive into that later, but, you know, another part about that productivity, and I would say this is probably for, you know, the bigger organizations that have a lot of employees, I would, I would ask the question to that business owner, and I would say, do you know where all those time bottlenecks are, right? Um, another question, do you know, you know, some areas in your business that your employees are spending maybe an excessive amount of time on and it isn't really productive? And maybe, you know, a different type of employees should be doing those hours and whatnot, right? And maybe you just don't know about it as that business owner, you know, where those hours are going, right? And so really knowing the answer to these questions can it can shed light on areas you know that could possibly be improved and it to Mogix, but you know just not only to Mogix, other time tracking applications as well they can help you you know get that data but also have that reporting on top of it that helps you answer those questions and you know and hopefully by doing that you know you're going to improve your productivity and hopefully your company bottom line. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I want to definitely ask you about how you accurately, you know, uh, track employees accountability and, and productivity. But before that, I'm curious, just how, how is your background sort of shaped this company and, and led you to get it started and what made you sort of get into this business? <laughs> yeah. Tomogic started now it started back in 2012. And it was actually branded under a different name and it was called Invoice for Time. And so, and so, you know, if you go back before Invoice for Time, back before 2012, um, I had a software consulting business where, you know, I would go out to the clients or the companies and then help them, you know, write software to help them become, you know, more efficient. Right. And it could be anything from me, you know, writing a web application or something behind the scenes, you know, manipulating data back and forth. But the end goal was just to, you know, make the companies more efficient using software. And so how this all worked was I would be at a client site and maybe, you know, most of the week I might be at this client. But then, you know, another part of the week I might be, you know, over at another client site. And then. Also, if the workload was a lot, I'd have other consultants as well who could help out, right, and work with me. And so basically, I needed a way to log my time 
and also any other consultant's time as well, so that then I could actually create the invoices and send that over to the clients. And so what I did was, and I, this is what I think many, you know, many businesses do, they go to um, their Excel spreadsheet and they say, can I log all my time there, right? And so that's what I was doing, throwing all that time in a spreadsheet. So basically I was tracking the amount of hours I worked, you know, each day for a client. And then if I had a contractor as well, I would also need to make sure that those hours got into that spreadsheet, you know, as well. And, and this worked, this worked really well, you know, especially at that point, I wasn't billing for thousands of hours every two weeks, right? It was, it was, you know, the amount of data that I had was relatively easy and small. So basically I was tallying up the hours in Excel, creating an invoice off it and sending it over to the client, right? And so again, I, this did work really well, but there was one time that I screwed up an invoice and I felt terrible about it. <laughs> and I basically just billed the client wrong. And um, you know, at that time, and this has been many years back, but I remember I was, you know, I was double and triple checking my work and before I created that invoice. But for some reason, somehow that invoice, you know, something went wrong either way, I screwed it up. And what, and what made me kind of frustrated about it is that, you know, it made me look bad. It made my company look bad. And then I knew that that, that client that I invoiced wrong, I know they're gonna be scrutinizing my invoices from then on even further than they were. And so I thought, you know what, there's just got to be, you know, a better way of doing this. And so then I did what I think a lot of people do is I Googled time tracking software. And I found, and this is back in 2012, pre-2012, actually, there was hundreds of them out there, right? Um, nowadays, I'm guessing there might be thousands. There are so many time tracking applications out there. And so really going through that list, it can really be overwhelming because there's just so many and you want to find one that really fits your organization, right? So then, you know, and what I did is I narrowed those hundreds of, of applications down to like a couple. And I was, you know, trying these out, kind of doing a, a proof of concept to see what really works well with my business. And from, from what I remember, and again, this has been a long time, was that none of these applications were simple to use. You know, I just wanted to enter some time, maybe in a timesheet, and then create an invoice. That was it, right? And if at all possible, and this would be like icing on the cake, would be to allow my consultants to enter their time as well. But that really wasn't a must have. Um, so like I said, the, the process to really enter time, create that invoice, just, just wasn't, you know, simple and easy to understand. Right. So, you know, boiling it down, I could have, I mean, I spent probably a couple of weeks demoing. I could have spent another couple of weeks and it would have probably made a little more sense. Right. But I guess I was just, um, I was just frustrated that I really couldn't find something to do what I really thought was a simple task. And so, yeah, from there, and then I started looking at myself and I said, Dan, duh, you're a software developer. Why don't you just write it? If you really, if I really think it's that simple, why don't I just write it? And then I get exactly what I want for my business. Right. And so I stepped back a little bit and it was, I don't remember how long, but it was probably three to four weeks later, I put a web application out there and it allowed me to enter time in a simple timesheet. And so then I could be at the client side, entering my time on a daily basis. And I also don't have to worry about, did I enter those time in that spreadsheet? I don't want to forget about that, right? And so this worked really great because the data was in one place. I could access it anywhere. And then also I could invoice my clients based upon that data. And then, you know, I could sleep a little better at night just because I know that invoice was, you know, going to be a lot more correct than what I had in that spreadsheet and whatnot. So there's less points of failure. Hmm. And, and so, yeah, this worked really well. Yeah. It, I love that approach. Yeah. You take, you decided to, you didn't find a solution. You decided to just take matters into your own hands and just find and make something that works to your needs and likely solves 
other people's issues as well, right? Other business entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah, and it 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 worked really well for my business. So you know, even so, what I thought about was that well, wait, you know, there's got to be other companies that might have a similar situation to me. Um, and so this was after, I don't know, I probably was using it for six months to a year. I don't really remember, but I, th I threw it. I said, you know, let's, let's go ahead and just put a merchant account behind it and let's just see if other companies could use this. And so at that point, that's when, um, that web application I had got branded into invoice for time. And that was in 2012. And so, yeah, so then we, I did get some companies to start using the application, but it wasn't a lot just because it really kind of fit the niche of a smaller company, similar to mine, right? And so when these, you know, we'd get these companies that were demoing invoice for time at that point, they were saying, yeah, you know, it works. It's too simplistic, meaning that there's just a lot of other things that it needed, like, um, you know, like expenses, you know, like notifications, approval system was a big one. Um, better reporting, so you can really get into that data better, right? And so, you know, taking that back and thinking, well, to make this really fit a wider audience, I guess that's, you know, what needs to be done. And so behind the scenes, and this wasn't an easy process, this wasn't the simple process. Put all this stuff in place, you know, I think it took three to four years. So then back in, from 2012 to 2016, all those items that were really needed were put in place. And then also that's when Tomogix, the name was born. So in 2016, we rebranded Invoice for Time over to Tomogix. And it had all those bells and whistles, right? And it fit that bigger audience at that point. And so, yeah, from then, you know, 2016 to now, um, there's been just more enhancements that have been added and enhancements happen, you know, all the time, but at the same time, it's, it's very important to keep the time tracking simple and easy to understand. That's kind of where I started with this. I just don't ever want to sacrifice, you know, the simplicity and ease of use to adding complexity, you know, with a lot of other stuff, but I mean, there's always got to be a balance there, but simplicity, and um, ease of use has to be a priority. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the long story of Tomogix. <laughs> no, I, I love that. I appreciate you sharing. That's I'm always so interested to see how a company was started and the fact that you started in 2012. I mean, this is this is like a completely different time for the internet, right? You know, societally, we weren't as dependent on the internet as we are now. Uh, I'm curious, has uh, Time objects, which, by the way, uh, I think that was the smart branding choice. I like the, I like the the name. It it flows a little better than. <laughs> Thanks. But has how has has it always been a cloud based software solution, or was it originally offered as like on premises software? You know, we've been asked you know that to be on premise, but that isn't just it's it's all cloud based, and there really isn't any, you know, anything in the works to ever move it on-prem. Okay. No, that's that's totally fair. I think that is where it's headed. And you're sort of ahead of your time, at least back in 2012 um, with, with that offering. Um, now with that, you know, 2012, that was a long time ago. And nowadays there are people, there's more people than ever working from home, largely to the, the COVID pandemic, which sort of jumped us into the future a good 10 years or so. How would you say this sort of affected your business? Yeah, um, since around like 2020, when many employees were, you know, they're sent home to work remotely, the business of Tomogix really picked up at that point. Um, and a big factor for that was that, you know, why companies started turning to Tomogix and not only Tomogix, but other applications as well, was that accountability, right? They wanted to know that, you know, they want to know what their remote workforce was working on and if they are really working, right? So, and basically if an employee knows that they need to enter time, you know, on a project or task, especially on a daily schedule, um, this can really make them really more accountable, but also more efficient as well, right? Um, yeah, and another struggle other than accountability was that, 
you really lost that face time you used to have while working on site. And with that, you know, that lack of monitoring, it can be easy to lose track of, you know, what your employees are working on. Now, being a business owner or manager, I used to be able to walk over and know what each of my employees, you know, what they were doing just by talking with them. But now with this remote work, um, that isn't easily possible. Um, and you can always do it with video calls, but it was just always easier to just walk over and see someone. Now, uh, with a time tracking application, I can easily see what project or task one of my employees worked on yesterday or last week or last month without having to call them. And not that a call isn't bad or anything. I'm just, I'm just stating that it's very easy and quick to see where time is being spent, right? And so to kind of recap, I would just say it's the accountability and then also be able to um, quickly and easily know where your employee are spending time on. I mean, those are the, the big factors. And that's, I mean, I think that's why Tomogix and I'm sure other time app, you know, tracking applications as well, picked up a lot of business during that time. Yeah, I imagine there has been uh, an explosion of, of different competitors. And I know you mentioned that there were, you know, hundreds of different competitors when you first launched and now there's probably thousands. Um, how, you know, how are you sort of combating or competing against some of these uh, companies that are also competing for the same customers? And why would you say, you know, a, a, one customer would go to Timeogix over another time tracking company? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I would start off with simplicity being really the first reason. Um, if, I, if I'm using a new, you know, application, I want it easy to understand. But, you know, not only for me, What's even uh, more important is that I need my employees to find it easy to understand as well, right? If my employees find it hard to navigate and whatnot, then the user adoption rate goes down and I don't want my employees wasting time, um, you know, just trying to figure out a system, right? And so the thing about Tomogix, and just to be very blunt about it, it is a simple timesheet and it works really well. And it's supposed to be that way since, you know, the majority of your users um, or employees, whoever's using the system, right? Um, the timesheet is the one screen they're spending the majority of their time on. And employee should be able to enter their time and their comments if needed easily and quickly with, with, so that they can then, you know, go on to whatever else they need to do in, during the day. Um, yeah. And a second reason is, um, would be that accuracy in time tracking. And I'm really not talking about something other time tracking applications do or they don't already have, but that was the real reason Tomogic was originally built was to have that consolidated place of data that really can be relied upon to then um, create that invoice and send that off to your client, right? And so, and there are multiple ways to increase, you know, accuracy through time tracking, and we can definitely go over those. But I would say last is flexibility. Um, and so what do I really mean by flexibility? Um, I'll give you a, just a, a scenario. Um, many times we have customers or potential customers, really, they're demoing to Mojix, and they might find it has um, everything they need except for maybe an item or two that might be crucial to their company. So, you know, when this happens, we'll get a request or an email that comes in and asks, you know, is there something that could be added or tweaked or something to make it really work for my company? Um, and hopefully we get that request because sometimes they move on to the next system and you never get that request, right? But whenever these requests do come in, a close eye is put on um, if anything can be done. And, you know, when you get these, there's a lot of things to really consider. I mean, does it make sense? Is it beneficial to other users? You know, what's the cost benefit? The list goes on and on. But all these things are really taken into account. And if it does make sense, you know, we'll definitely put an effort in to see if we can do anything to make it fit with your company, you know, a little better. Now, I'm not saying that all requests can be granted, but I'm saying a genuine look is done to see what is really possible, right? Um, but I would I would add on, the, on this is that, Many of the requests that we do get 
are for custom reports. Um, Tomogix has a lot of canned reports and they satisfy, you know, the majority of customers, right? It allows, you know, the business owner to slice and dice the data in, you know, many different ways. But there may be something uh, specific that a customer needs on a report that the can reports, you know, do not have. Or even there's been, you know, several times customers are moving from another system to Tomogix and they need a specific report with kind of the look and the feel of the old system, right? And so in these cases, as long as you're a customer of Tomogix, um, we always create custom reports for free, you know, as long as, of course, the data supports it. That's, that's, that's a must, right? But um, so really where I'm going with this is, is just think about if you as a business owner are demoing, you know, time tracking software and something doesn't fit your needs, um, think about asking for a custom report or even specific enhancements um, to see if it would work. See if you could see what would happen if you asked some of the industry giants that, right? Tomogix is a smaller company. And we listen to that feedback and we try to make changes, you know, where we can um, just to make it a good fit for your business. That's great. Yeah. I love that you're, you're working with closely with customers to help kind of make them happy and figure out the solutions to their issues. Right. You know, it, the simplicity is huge and it makes me think of the saying, if it ain't broke, why fix it? <laughs> you know, yep. because that just ends up just making it, more convoluted and, and more of an issue for everybody. You know, it makes me think too of, um, we've all kind of been to those situations from a customer standpoint where we go through like a, a drive through at a coffee chain or something and they're updating their system and they're, the employees are trying to figure out the, the new, um, the new system and they don't know how it works and it just slows everything down before it in theory gets better. But a lot of times I've seen it, them just revert back to the same old system because it was just a failure, you know? Yeah. So I like that you're just, you found your software works, uh, you make changes, you in, incorporate new features here and there, but for the large, but by and large, it's mostly the same software. It's kind of been th since its inception, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, like I said, the simplicity is core, but enhancements mm -hmm. are added all the time. It's just, you know, we want to keep that simplicity there. We never want to lose that because like you don't that. want your yeah. users, like you're saying, get frustrated and then go off to something else or a different, go back to what they had. That'd be, that, that wouldn't right. be good. Right. Now, can you elaborate a little bit more on the, um, the accuracy of, of tracking your employees time? Because this is obviously core to what you do. How do you make this happen and, and uh, make sure that employee productivity stays accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Having accurate time tracking is, is crucial, right? Especially if you're really billing that client. Um, yeah, and I'll go over some simple ways that, you know, Tomogix does this, but I would, I would just add that, you know, there are many other time and expense applications out there and they'll do something similar to what I'm going to talk about, but they might be, they might be implemented a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. But so I would say first, you know, for accuracy, it's just to make sure your employees are filling in their time promptly, right? You don't want them, um, filling in their time at the end of the week. So you know, if it's Friday and I haven't filled in anything on the timesheet, I know my, I will never remember what I did Monday. At least I don't. Right. Maybe some people will. No, I no? no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, you got to do that on a, you know, kind of a daily basis. Otherwise you just forget. Right? Um, right. So you really want them to enter that time and also comments, you know, on what they did, if that's feasible. Right. So mm -hmm. one of the ways to help with that scenario is there are notifications you can subscribe to. And there are actually multiple notifications, but in this instance, there's a notification. Let's, let's just say your, your business quits at 5 p.m. And so you as a business owner, you can set up a notification that goes out maybe 4.30 p.m. and it just says, hey, uh, John Doe, you know, don't forget to enter your time for the day. So it's just a simple way to allow them or let them know that they need to enter some time. Um, yeah, and another item for accuracy is is the submission of time entry at the end of the week. Um, and not all companies really need to do this, but when you submit a timesheet at the end of the week, what what's happening is is that user is stating they have completed all their time entries for that week, and then once they submit that timesheet, it becomes read only. 
Um, so if you if you don't use a timesheet submission process, you do run that risk of what you invoice that client may not match the hours worked um, by the employee. Like for example, let's say you created an invoice and you sent it off to that client. Then one of your employees, maybe they forget to enter some time or maybe they added too much time. But either way, they go back into that timesheet and they adjust some hours. Then what you build versus what you have, you know, in your database here, it's not accurate anymore. So, and then also far as um, submitting your time, you could, we talked about daily notification. We can also add um, submit your timesheet notifications as well. So if you know your company, you know, they should be finished at the end of the week on, you know, Saturday or whatever that day is, at the end of the day, you as a business owner, can um, set up a notification that goes to all your employees that says, hey, employee, don't forget to submit your timesheet. And so, and then last, I would talk about the approval system. Um, and some companies, you know, they don't need to do approvals, but if you truly want that accuracy, um, and it's, this is especially if you're billing those clients, this is something that I really is, is recommended. So. To step back a little bit, you know, what really is an approval? An approval is just, um, it's just a simple way of, of requiring somebody. And now, this could be like a manager or, it be, you know, it could be a client to review your employee's time for accuracy. So if you have your employee um, doing work for one of your clients, you want to know if that client approves of that time logged by your employee. Um, I mean... I mean, what could happen? The last thing you really want to happen is you send that invoice out and there's there's a discrepancy in what the client thinks and what your employee logged, right? And that's not a comfortable situation to be in. And so how this is really accomplished is your employee will submit their time at the end of the week. Now, when this happens, an email notification goes out to that client and it asks that client to say, hey, will you look over this timesheet? and either you know, approve of the time or deny it and send it back so it can be fixed. So yeah, those are some of the items Tamajix does for accuracy. Yeah, no, that, that, thanks, for, thanks for walking us through that. I love how it's, it's so, one of the main features is just reminders, you know? And that makes a lot of sense because I'm constantly setting reminders. I feel like we, a lot of, I always refer to refer to myself as having internet brain where I'm just like so scatterbrained and just there's I've got a million tabs open and um, my short term memory is a little spotty, you know. So um, having a reminder to tell me when to update my timesheet or whatever it might be is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and with with age it gets worse, at least for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I'll have have that to look forward to. No, I've already noticed that I'm just hitting thirty, so. Uh, yeah, that's it's uh, it's getting worse and worse by the way. <laughs> but we won't we won't we won't dwell too much on that. <laughs> what are what are some particular industries that you work closely with um, or that get the most value out of Time Logics? Yeah, um, yeah, Tomagic. There, there really isn't just one. I mean, Tomagic is used by you know all different companies. It could be you know healthcare, colleges, manufacturing, um, technology. Yeah, a lot of technology. Uh, companies, but it really just comes down to um, does your company have a need to track time and expenses, right? Do you need to know, you know, where your employees are spending their time and if there are bottlenecks in that process? Um, yeah, another question is do you really want more accountability and sometimes even more, you know, productivity from your remote or even your on site workforce? Um, yeah, but if, if I had to pick just one industry, um, that does use it uh, more than the others, it'd probably be consulting companies that has, you know, a remote workforce. Okay. Yeah, that's a good segue because I was going to ask, you know, or say, according to my anonymous sources, Timeogix works especially well for consulting companies. <laughs> could you could you sort of confirm or deny those claims and elaborate on, on why that is? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, before Timeogix was even Timeogix, it was originally built for a consulting company, right? And so consulting companies are really near and dear to my heart. Um, like for example, let's say you're, um, 
let's say you're a business owner of a consulting company, and let's say you have 100 employees, and you have a couple of clients that you work for. So maybe, you know, 50 of your employees might work for this client over here. You know, another 50 might work for this, you know, this company over here. And they're basically, they're acting as consultants for you. But, and these employees, they could be working, they could be working on site or remotely. It really doesn't matter. But, you know, what really is very important is at the end of the week, you know how many, you as a business owner, you know how many hours your employees have logged with that client. That way you can properly, you know, invoice that client. And so how this really all works is that your employees, let's say, you know, they're working for client A. What's going to happen is at the end of the week, they're going to submit that timesheet. Now, once this happens, an email goes out to that client and it asks them to either approve or deny of that time for that week. Now, if the client finds something wrong, you know, with something's wrong, they maybe they added too many hours or, you know, who knows. They're going to deny that. It goes back to that employee to fix it. But if that, you know, that approver, that client says, you know what, everything looks good. Um, they approve of that time. Then as uh, the business owner, I get an email that says, hey, this has been approved. And then I can go ahead and invoice for that time, you know, right away. So it's really a quick process to have um, your employees or your consultants time, whoever they are, submitted and approved by that client. And then when you send that invoice over to that client, there really should never be any questions or gotchas because when that client is looking at that invoice, they've already approved of that time, right? So that's why, you know, I think Tomogix works really well, you know, for consulting companies. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And there, and there's absolutely no shortage of consultants, consultant companies, especially in the tech industry. Right. So that's the, that's great. Um, now, do you have any particular short piece of advice for customers who might be listening to this podcast or watching on YouTube? Yeah. Um, I would say just give Tomogix a try, but I wouldn't limit myself to Tomogix. I would also, you know, filter out two or three other time app tracking applications that look like they might fit your business. Um, and the reason being is that unfortunately there just isn't a, you know, a one size fits all for all companies in time tracking, right? Really what's important is that you find the application that really fits, you know, your company the best. Um, but the good thing about Tomogix is you can try Tomogix out, you know, for free, no credit card, no nothing. The free system gives you three free users. Um, and if you find it compatible, um, then I would move next to be, I would take a small subset of your users or your employees, maybe two to five to 10 or whatnot, have them try out the system as well for a couple weeks or even a couple months. Um, this way you truly know Tomogix, you know, will be or won't be a good fit, you know, for your company. Um, and, you know, also if you need more, like I said, the free system has three free users. If you need more than three users to try it out, send an email and we, we increase the account all the time for people who are demoing it out. We really want you to know that this is, you know, if this system is really going to work for you. Um, and then also, you know, if you have data from a previous system, send an email over, we can import that, you know, as well. But I, I guess I would just finish by saying you do have to invest, invest some time to see if it's really a good fit for your company. But the good thing about Tomogix is that you can try this all out for free with as many users as you want and nothing's ever required of you. That's great. No, I love, I love that you have a demo and that you're so open and, and transparent about the reaching out, being communicative. You have, you have good customer service. That's huge in this day and age, especially for a, for a tech company or a software company. Yep. Yep. Now, if I were a company wanting to, to demo uh, time objects, where would you send me and, and how can I get in, in contact with you? Yeah. Yeah. Just go out to the website. It's tomogix.com. Um, and then also if you want to send an email out, it's just info at tomogix.com. And, uh, yeah, if you want to reach out personally, just shoot me an email at dan at tomogix.com. Dan at tomogix.com. Okay, perfect. Well, all right, go to timelogics.com if you're interested. Thank you so much for your time, Dan. This has been really insightful. Yeah, thanks, Bo, for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Well, let's try and have you back one of these days. Uh, for everyone listening, thank you so much for listening to the Slash.media podcast. I'm your host, Bo Hamilton. 
Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all of our upcoming B2B software-related podcasts, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.